Oh, there's no way. There's no way, he said. There's no way that WWE would let that happen, he said. Oh, there's no way. You guys just got to stop thinking that everybody's automatically going to want to go to AEW, he said. Why would they sit there and have a guy who just main evented WrestleMania allow them to leave the company a few months later, he said. Oh, yeah, his contract expired, he said. Don't lay a cope on me, huh? Guess somebody was ding-dong wrong about Daniel Bryan and his contract status, and that was me. Holy hell. Forgive me for thinking that the WWE wouldn't sit there and have somebody literally be in the main event of their biggest show of the year, and a few months later, let them go to a rival company in their same field. Forgive me for thinking that they wouldn't pull some Dixie Carter crap. Forgive me for thinking that a company that has over a decade invested in Daniel Bryan that can still get something out of Daniel Bryan would allow Daniel Bryan to go anywhere else. Forgive me. Forgive me for in spite of all the stupidity in recent years that we've seen from Vince McMahon and the WWE for thinking for even one second that this is the Vince McMahon of old and he wouldn't possibly be that stupid. We have seen the levels of stupidity only increase more and more in 2021 with the decisions made by this company to the point where I have to realize more and more and all of you do that this is not the Vince McMahon of old. This is just old Vince McMahon. These reports about Daniel Bryan going to AEW, already being signed to AEW, or close enough, and being slated to appear and debut for AEW on that Arthur Ashe Stadium show in September, you know, certainly hit the internet like a shockwave this past week, as they should have. Because that's definitely, when you talk about a wrestling world that is seeking out news-related items, you see it so often when you go to the different wrestling websites and dirt sheet websites, and they talk about all this crap that really isn't news, that really doesn't matter, because they're just trying to plug content, they're trying to get something out there. Like, this is legitimately news. There's no question. And now that we know that this is apparently a thing, and especially because of the fact that Dave Meltzer isn't flat out reporting it to be the case. You know it's true because he's too biased towards his buddies to spoil the deal. And you know it. It's time to think about and talk about what does this mean for Daniel Bryan? What does this mean for AEW and as a byproduct WWE? And I think first things first, Daniel Bryan is not a megastar. Let's be clear. He's not a landscape changing guy. He's not. That said, I can't believe WWE would be stupid enough to be able to put themselves in a position where they would allow this to happen. And regardless, independent of anything about him going to an AEW or working in New Japan, anything like that, like just from a WWE lens, like WWE needs recognizable names. WWE needs respected names. WWE needs guys that could go out there that the fans could still be invested in, that the fans will care about, that the fans would actually maybe want to pay money to go see perform live in person. They want to buy their merch and etc. And again, while Daniel Bryan is not a raging mega household mainstream star, with respect to WWE and the current state of their product and their roster, he's one of the bigger ones they have. Like, really dumb. Now, let's talk about Daniel Bryan with AEW. Here's what it's not. This is not the thing that makes AEW bigger than WWE. This is not the move on its own that helps Dynamite consistently beat Raw in the ratings, let alone SmackDown in the ratings every week. This is not that. You can be a total fan of Daniel Bryan. You can love his work, respect the hell out of him, you know, have him be your favorite, think he's the great, the tops, and also be connected to reality and say that he's not that type of landscape-changing type of guy. A landscape-changing type of guy, if you looked at it from an AEW perspective, would be if you brought in a Brock Lesnar, if you brought in a John Cena. And even though you know how I feel about John Cena, the reality is 
John Cena is somebody that is so closely associated with WWE, so closely associated with Vince McMahon, so such a company guy, a prop they've used for so long. You bring a Cena in, that would naturally bring in way more eyeballs than a Daniel Bryan ever could, especially with some of Cena's exploits now in Hollywood. Those would be more landscape, dynamic changing type of moves. Daniel Bryan is not that. But to those that say that this is a drop in the bucket, this is no big deal, this is just bringing in another WWE guy, like that's dumb dick shit right there too. Because when you look at it, like even to the people that love the Kenny Omegas of the world and the Young Bucks of the world and etc., Daniel Bryan is bigger and better from a recognition standpoint, a talent standpoint, a star power standpoint, than those guys arguably all put together combined. He is. Like, you instantly have the top guy in your company the moment you bring in a Daniel Bryan. That's independent of any other reported moves that could be happening down the pike. Daniel Bryan instantly comes in, and he's the top guy. He's the biggest name from a regular, full-time wrestler that they would have. Sure, you have a legend on the roster like a Sting and so forth, but in terms of the regular full-time guys, Daniel Bryan would be the top guy. And to think that they wouldn't get some type of small bump out of that is asinine. Because yes, while he's not going to have a significant impact in terms of drawing all of a sudden Daniel Bryan comes in, you get a half million more viewers and 200,000 more viewers in the key demo every week. That's not going to mean that, especially now right away. Um, there's no doubt that if anything else, he will turn out even more of the hardcore fan base. Some of those ones that aren't really um, watching AEW, maybe they're watching an NXT instead, or they still hang on to a Raw or a SmackDown. Like some of them will be tempted to come watch an AEW, at least initially, to see what you're going to do with Daniel Bryan. So it, it's a good move for AEW, clearly. It's a great move for Daniel Bryan because if the reports are true, which I have no reason to doubt them, the fact that he would be able to sit there and get a similar money deal to what he was getting with WWE, but to have to work fewer dates, to be able to have the flexibility to work other places like New Japan, like, who the fuck wouldn't take that deal? I mean, honestly, yes, AEW does not have the domestic, let alone international distribution and following that a WWE does, but who's to say that they can't grow and expand that footprint over the next few years and that Daniel Bryan couldn't be a part of that? So, I mean, it's a great get for AEW. It's a great move for Daniel Bryan. It's a dumb dick thing for WWE to allow to happen. Like, you could sit there and have the arrogance of belief in the Titan Tower machine and say that nobody's bigger than us. And while that might fundamentally be true, like, you can only make but so many bad decisions before those chickens come home to roost. And when you look at the decrease in interest in their product, the decrease in viewership over the last few years, those chickens bark, bark, are coming home to freaking roost. Now, if you ask, how do you bring in Daniel Bryan? You know, you're going to have all those that are going to be talking about all the dream matches. You know, you got Cody Rhodes sitting there. Well, you yeah, know, he's got to go through me founder shit before he does anything else. No, he doesn't. For those that are going to say, I want to throw straight at the top, throw him at Can you make a throw him at Hangman Page? No, you don't. Because here's the deal. You're bringing in a Daniel Bryan. He's an established guy in general in terms of the wrestling landscape. You still need to establish him within the AEW product a little bit. But what you do with a guy like him is you bring him in and you want to use him to both get more viewers and also create exposure for other guys that you want to elevate. What I'm saying is you don't want to immediately throw him at the world title and put him in the world title spot because the world title spot, if anything, should be used to elevate guys within AEW and Daniel Bryan doesn't need to be elevated right now. It is a waste of resources and a very poor utilization of resources in my opinion. If I'm bringing in a Daniel Bryan into the fold and let's say you're doing it at that Arthur Ashe show, like I want him to come in and be talking about he wants to work with somebody. Like you're only gonna get one First AEW Daniel Bryan match. So make it a big deal. As much as I think it's ridiculous as this company wants to push Jungle Boy to the freaking moon, you know, Daniel Bryan has previously referenced that one of the people he wants to wrestle is Jungle Boy. 
Well, then have him come and say, you know, there are all this great, young, new talent that I've never faced. I've been somewhere else for so many years. Now is my opportunity at this stage of my career. I want to gauge myself against these young, up-and-coming, hungry lions. I want to see what I've still got. I want to prove that I can still be the best, goddammit, because I'm Brian Daniels and hey, American Dragon. And you have him say, I want my first match to be against Jungle Boy, or I want my first match to be against somebody like a Darby Allen. You want it to be against guys that aren't automatically associated with WWE. You also want it to be against guys that are in a spot where you're trying to elevate them and take them to another level. That, to me, is what I would do. If I was bringing him in as a single act, if I was bringing him along with somebody else, different story. But if I'm talking about Daniel Bryan and how I would use him, that, to me, at least initially, is how I would use him. Keep him away from the world title scene. Keep him away from the true top guys right away. There ain't no reason to blow the freaking load right away. Like, let him serve a greater purpose and drive greater value in your product. Because you think about it from a, a rating standpoint. If you're assuming that Daniel Bryan is going to be one of your key ratings drivers, which certainly would be reasonable to expect relative to the audience that AEW Dynamite currently has on Wednesdays, then why would you want to blow all your load on him in the championship spot? Why not have the champion be the champion? And that draws a little bit in and of itself. Why not have him be somewhere else in the card? You get what I'm saying? There are a lot of things you can do. The reality is, is while this is not a landscape, dynamic changing thing for AEW, this is easily their biggest, most relevant, most timely get for the roster today. And this is one of these guys that when you look at the current position of AEW and where they're at, you absolutely make this move 100 out of 100 times. It doesn't matter if your roster is overloaded. It doesn't matter if you have a glut of wrestlers that you can't use them all. None of that shit matters. When you can't get the chance to get a guy like him, strengthen yourself, weaken the rival or competition, you do it 100 out of 100 times. So if they've been able to make this happen, hats off to Tony Khan, the EVPs, whoever the hell was involved with this deal. Because it's not a small thing. It really isn't. And if people are going to say that this is a small potatoes, no big deal thing, at least initially, they're crazy. What it means in the long term will come a lot down to how AEW presents him, how AEW features him, what they do with him. Like, just bringing in Daniel Bryan alone is only going to matter but so much, is my point. But it is certainly a big deal for AEW. I don't think anybody could argue that. I mean, you could let me know in the comments what you think about the news of this move. You think it's going to be a big, huge deal, or you think it's going to be eh, much ado about nothing? Let me know. And smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. All right. I think I'm done with this video. I'm out. No big deal! No big deal! Marcus Smart here, and I gotta tell you, my god, I can't believe it! I can't believe it! Dreams do still come true! Daniel Bryan is coming to AEW! Forget what that other honky said! You bring in a Daniel Bryan, you instantly have a big time mainstream number one star! You send him straight to the top, straight at the world championship! You put that belt on him by God, and then can you imagine the possibilities? Six months of wrestling between him and Kenny Omega, and then here comes Kazuchika Okada! Oh my god! Oh my god! Bullet Club is the cleaner! It's everything! It's fucking awesome! It's like New Japan right here! And then there's Punk! There's CM Punk! Oh my god, Marcus Smart can't take it anymore! Not only is AEW a roster loaded with some of the best motherfucking wrestlers in the world, but now you bring in Daniel Bryan, who once again is known around the world as the absolute unquestioned best motherfucking wrestler in the world! Nobody can stop AEW now. Nobody. Nobody. Vince McMahon, count your days because you're doomed. Doomed. Doomed, I said.